Serialization is a key part of modern applications. We use it everywhere from HTTP requests to storage and databases. The performance of any serializer is key. Today we're going to look at some of the most popular serialization frameworks. Before we get started, let's go over a few notes to ensure that we're all on the same page about what to expect. All of the benchmarks are available on GitHub in the link in the description. I will keep these up to date and accept pull requests for fixes, new libraries and scenarios. If the library that you want to see isn't listed, feel free to add it. My initial criteria was to get running with the serializers in under 5 minutes, 10 minutes maximum, with new Git packages only for the most part. After all, I am any single person and I'm pretty busy. Also keep in mind that some of these frameworks are brand new to me, like Bebop for example. There is no such thing as the best serializer, as each one has different trade-offs and I can't know all of your requirements. So in this video, I'll present the data that I have for the scenario that I've got and then let you be the judge of which serializer you think is best. Of course, depending on your scenario, your mileage will vary. We will compare JSON serializers and binary serializers separately. All of the benchmarks will be running on benchmark.net, running on .NET 7 Preview 7. Of course, we'll be using all the latest versions of all the packages. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the setup we will use. Every serializer framework will need to process the same payload with three different sizes. The small size is roughly 170 kilobytes of data. The medium size is about four megabytes of data and the large size is about 17 megabytes of data. The payload is a list of users with each user having a set of orders generated using Bogus. We will compare both the serialization and deserialization performance of all the frameworks before taking a look at the size of the payloads that it generates. So let's start off with the JSON serialization frameworks. We will look at Jill, Newtonsoft.json, servicestack.txt, span.json, system.txt.json, and utf8.json. For the binary serializers, we're going to take a look at AvroConvert, Bebop, Beeson in the MongoDB implementation, Growbuff, Hyperion, Message Pack, MSG Pack, and protobuf.net. So let's take a quick tour around our project. Inside of our program CS file, we have a couple of different helpers generate datasets, verify serialized sizes, and the benchmark runner itself. The verify serialized sizes function dumps out the serialized payload sizes to the screen in a pretty naive way, but it's also pretty handy for our comparison. We'll see the results of this later. Generate datasets is pretty much a carbon copy from the bogus.net readme file with a few tweaks to help us generate some larger datasets. As for our benchmarks, we have an abstract base class that contains a common set of attributes at the class level from which JSON benchmark and binary benchmarks will inherit. The JSON benchmark class contains a generate datasets helper that reads from the data underscore files in the project folder. I've put some switches into the CS proj file so we can control which data files we are loading for our tests in a bit easier manner. The exact same setup is used in the binary benchmark class. For our models, we have three files that are used for the majority of the tests. User, order, and gender. For the Bebop serializer, I needed to include a separate definition and generate the classes for it. I also needed to include a wrapper class so that I could easily serialize the list of users. Lastly, we have the data JSON files themselves. These contain all of the payloads used by the tests via the generate datasets method in both the JSON benchmark and binary benchmark classes. So now I'm going to pause the recording for a bit whilst I run through both sets of benchmarks and we will walk through the results afterwards. The full result log will be available inside of the GitHub repository for those that are curious. The first benchmark results that we're gonna look at is the JSON benchmarks. On a quick look at the deserialization results, it appears that span.json is the quickest across all of the datasets, although Jill and system.txt.json appear to be leading by quite a way when it comes to memory usage. On the serialization side of things, span.json is again the fastest library, but this time its memory usage is massively improved. Now let's take a look at the binary serializer results. Starting with deserialization, we can see that we have two libraries sitting pretty at the top of the tree, Growbuff and Bebop. I've not heard of Growbuff before this experiment, so I was honestly expecting it to sit somewhere near the bottom. Definitely not to be first. 
It also appears to be really good at handling the memory as well. When it comes to serialization, Growbuff is again on the top spot. This time, Message Pack takes second place and does so using a lot less memory. One of the most interesting things to note about the binary benchmarks is that MongoDB Basin driver is actually really slow. To put this into perspective, ProtobufNet, Message Pack, Bebop, and Growbuff are all faster to process a payload four times the size in the same amount of time. I would have thought that MongoDB would have been quite a bit quicker given how widely it's used. Lastly, let's explore the sizes of all the formats, starting with the binary serializers. For the small payload, it's no surprise to me to see MSG Pack, ProtobufNet, and Avro Convert at the top of the list. And to be honest, there's not a lot between them here. Bebop and Growbuff are probably the most surprising. They obviously perform very well on the performance side of things, but there is a substantial trade-off for the size of the serialized object. As we would expect, for the medium and large payloads, story is very much the same, but I have to say the overall compression ratios for all of them are pretty good. So let's take a look at the JSON serializer size. You would think that this would be the same for all the different frameworks. Topping the charts in the small categories, we have Service Stack, Span JSON, and Newton Software JSON. It's pretty clear that UTF-8 JSON and GL obviously do things very similarly, given their output is of identical length. Again, as we would expect, for medium and large categories, stories repeated as expected. After looking into the reason why there was such a difference between the serializers on the JSON side, I found out that it's because at mostly default settings, whether the library deserialized nulls came into the equation. For example, some libraries serialize nulls by default and others don't. The way that libraries also handled GUIDs became a factor. For example, whether or not the hyphen separator was included in the serialized string. So based on this data that you've seen, what serializer would you go for? Let me know in the comments before going to watch this video.